Good afternoon, everyone, um, to this Sunday afternoon. Uh, my name is Vinay Mogalotu. I'm a volunteer for the North South uh, Webinars and Workshops team. Um, today, uh, we have uh, an interesting topic, uh, um, clean up your diet for healthy living. Um, Mrs. Komal Rastogi is going to give uh, today's uh, presentation uh, from her experience. Uh, Mrs. Komal Rasogi uh, is a whole food plant-based nutritional lifestyle head coach. She's a graduate of the plant-based nutrition certificate program from Cornell University. Since 2015, she has been working with individuals to help improve and sustain healthy nutrition practices. She is a founder of NamasteArogya.com, where she, along with her husband, Dr. Amit Rasogi, periodically conducts very popular and successful online and in-person group classes on weight loss and chronic disease management through whole food plant-based nutrition. All the group classes are free of cost as a service to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay, for the uh, introduction. And uh, today's topic, as you all know, is clean your diet for a healthy living, right? And I am really uh, honored to be able to talk to you about this topic. I would try to share as much, you know, in as much clarity that I know. And thanks to NSF webinar team for the wonderful opportunity. So let's begin. <clears throat> First of all, I just want to tell you that this webinar is going to explore the benefits of whole food plant-based diet uh, based on scientific evidence, as well as my own personal experiences. Uh, this information on webinar, in this webinar is intended not to substitute for any personal um, or professional advice. So please, before you decide to change your diet, talk to an expert. And another thing, I don't have any financial relationship with any of the products or any of the things that I talk about in these uh, webinars. Today's objectives would be understanding health in community from India, South Asia, understanding the benefits of traditional Indian diet, understanding how our diet has changed and its correlation with the rising of the chronic diseases, and how to clean your diet for a healthy living. First of all, um, let's start with a simple small quiz. What do you think? Uh, are obesity, diabetes, high cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, cardiovascular diseases, most type of cancers, are they genetic? Signs of aging linked to our lifestyle, not preventable or reversible? Or do you think they are preventable or reversible? Okay, so I can close the poll and we can share the results. So 49% people think it's linked to our lifestyle and 40% people believe it's preventable, reversible. Wow, that, that was good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. This is why we are here today. Let's um, Now when we know that it is linked to our lifestyle and we also know that it is prevent preventable, most of the things are they are reversible. So let's try to understand what we can do. As South Asians, um, we have you know, every ethnic group have their own limitations, right? So in terms of health, we have a different set of data. So that's what I'm going to uh, share with you. So first of all, um, you know, there are a few concepts that I would want to kind of um, go on briefly so that we know what, uh, so that we are on the same page. So what are the leading causes of death in the US? So 10 leading causes of death in the US are this is this data is from 2016. Uh, it is on the CDC website. So heart disease, cancer, lower respiratory disease, accidents, strokes, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, influenza and pneumonia, kidney disease and suicides. So out of these 10, if you would see heart disease, cancer, lower respiratory disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, kidney disease, these are all linked to our lifestyle. So we are, we do not necessarily need to experience these if we can, um, you know, change our lifestyle for a better one. So now here I want to um, clarify what obesity is and what does it do. Obesity is the reason for type 2 diabetes, uh, high cholesterol levels, cancer risk, mood disorders, heart disease, reproductive disorders, liver disease, hypertension, and much more. So obesity is not something, even if somebody is, you know, slim, 
when you look at them they can still be obese now how how is that possible being overweight or obese basically means that one has too much body fat so american college of endocrinology defines obesity as a body fat percentage of um, 25% or more in men and 35% or of more in women to check this you know you can talk to your doctor or there are simple uh, electronic weighing scales these days you know you can do you know uh, they have the setting where they can measure your body percentage. They, they will give you a rough idea. So now um, our digits matter. Abdominal obesity, which means uh, the circumference, our waist circumference, okay? So height versus waist ratio has to be ideally two is to one, which means if, um, let's say, a person is five feet tall, which means 60 inches, in height their waist ideally should be the circumference should be uh, 30 inches or less so that is the height versus waist ratio this is the healthy one now healthy waistline cutoff for women is 31.5 inches most men is 37 inches now here um, waistline cutoff for south asian men is 35.5 inches you will see a difference that um, south asian men at 37 it's not healthy but 35.5 is the healthy uh, waistline cutoff because we store more visceral fat than any other uh, ethnic group now body mass index uh, bmi you must have heard about it uh, i have given the formula at the bottom it's um, calculating bmi the formula is weight in kilograms divided by height in meters square or you can use online calculators so underweight would be if we have a BMI um, under uh, less than 18. Normal weight, BMI between 18.5 to 24.9. Overweight, uh, one would be overweight um, if the BMI is between 25 and 29.9. Obesity starts at the BMI of 30 or greater. But for the South Asian cutoff, normal weight BMI is instead of um, you know from 18.5 to 24.9 it ends at 22.9 overweight being overweight starts at the bmi of 22.9 through 27.49 and obesity starts at 27.49 or greater so there is a remarkable difference if you look into the left and the right of the data so um why is it different we are uh, excuse me, metabolically obese. We are also called thin fat Indian population. Uh, we are metabolically obese, which means at any given BMI, we have greater total body fat. We have more visceral fat. We have greater insulin resistance and higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, diabetes in South Asians, we developed type 2 diabetes at least 10 years earlier than the Caucasian group. Also, our risk starts to increase at the age 25 to 34 years and more likely to progress from pre-diabetes to diabetes. This is all uh, one of the main reasons, again, as I said, you know, it is because of the fat that we accumulate in our body. So blood pressure, uh, there is a rising uh, prevalence rates in India. So hypertension prevalence in India uh, adults is about 30 percent and this is what statistically you know those who got diagnosed most of us don't even bother to have um, a blood pressure measuring cuff at home and we don't even bother to measure our blood pressure in routine so this is what we are talking about the diagnosed cases so in the past two decades uh, india's average uh, blood pressure has increased whereas most western countries the average blood pressure has decreased similar thing with cardiovascular disease you know there are again we see rising prevalence rates in india cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of mortality about one fourth of the deaths in india that are happening that are happening are due to cardiovascular disease median age for a heart attack in south asians is 52 year you know age of 52 
And in Europeans, the age is 63. Not only that we have this, um, you know, we experience heart attacks 11 years earlier than the Europeans, we also have four times more, we are more likely to die of a heart attack than the other groups. So percentage of cardiovascular diseases before the age of 70, in India, it is 52%. In Western populations, it is only 23%. So you can see the difference. And we will discuss, of course, you know, why all these things are happening, what has changed, and you know, what can we do about it. So we know everybody is eating the similar things. So are there any places in the world where these chronic diseases are uncommon? among the populations. So yes, there are uh, Okinawa, Japan, rural China, Papua New Guinea. These are just some of the few examples. And so what happens is that how did um, the scientists come across? They, you know, as we discussed the top 10 leading causes of death in USA. So when scientists see that in one community the leading causes are heart disease cancers and you know type 2 diabetes and all this stuff and then they see a population they go to okinawa japan or rural china or you know other populations and they see that these things are almost non-existent you know all these chronic diseases that we hear of every day so then they um you know, do the observational studies, which means they observe what is different, what are they eating, what is their lifestyle versus what is our lifestyle. So that is where um, they came along with an evidence-based solution, which is plant-based diets. So plant-based diets, scientifically proven, they are the superior way of eating, okay? And this is how, um, now here, I am trained in whole food plant-based diet, which is the most evidence-based uh, nutrition form. This is, um, you know, there are many resources. If anybody would want, they can go to my website. It's namastearogya.com and look under the resources page. I have tried to list a few of the resources that you can use. And um, so this is the evidence-based solution is plant-based diet, like moving away from the animal-based foods. So what are the benefits of a plant-based diet? There are many benefits, but in particular, again, I'm talking about whole food plant-based lifestyle. So some of the benefits are, um, this is evidence-based nutrition, and this is um, you know, for the whole family. It's not like somebody has type two diabetes, they have to eat different food, and somebody who has high cholesterol or high, you know, more weight, body weight, they have to eat differently. No, the, you can eat the same food. As long as you're eating right, you know, everything falls into place. This is budget friendly. If, uh, you know, there are some myths that I, um, sometimes people talk to me about that, you know, this might be very costly, you know, uh, to be, going plant-based no this is budget friendly diet you will feel energetic sustainable weight loss which means it's not like a yo-yo diet where you would lose weight and then it comes back you lose weight you know lose five pounds and gain um, 10 pounds no this is sustainable weight loss prevent and even reverse heart disease if you um, you know follow it strictly you can lower the risk of breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, and many other cancers. These three cancers are well documented, uh, breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate cancer. So there are many other cancers that you can actually prevent. Prevent and treat diabetes, avoid stroke, better blood pressure control, and there are many more benefits. The list goes on and on and on. So what is whole food plant-based diet? As you can see on the right side, this is the power plate. So this is evidence-based lifestyle consists of four, mainly four food groups. One is whole grains, lentils, vegetables, and the fourth group is fruits. So you eat plenty of all these foods and there would be no chronic diseases in your life, no overweight, no obesity, nothing. So, a perfect example is traditional Indian diet. So this is uh, what we all grew up eating in India, right? So this diet is a perfect example because we have whole grains, a number of whole grains. We use um, barley, brown rice, quinoa, 
amaranth, millet, so many uh, of the whole grains are used in India. We have vegetables, fruits, lentils, variety of lentils, right? And the spices, they have their own benefit. Uh, you know, they bring out the flavor, not only the flavor, but also health. Now this is the, uh, unfortunately, this is the new face of Indian diet. We have bread pakoras, samosas, gulab jamun, uh, or these, um, you know, vadas. So yes, these can be plant-based too. You can make, you can get easily get uh, plant-based samosa. You can get plant-based vada or plant-based bread pakora. But the thing is, this does not qualify for a whole food plant-based diet. That's why I'm going to talk to you mainly about the whole food plant-based diet, as opposed to um, being on just on being on plant-based. So what are we doing wrong? We are adding more and more sugar to our um, daily diets, right? We have included honey, uh, maple syrup. I mean, if when somebody tells you avoid sugar, we try to avoid the sugar, but then we go to jaggery. We go to all the alternatives that there are, right? So we have, we all of us have a sweet tooth for, you know, all these things are changing and ghee, you know, what are we doing um, in our kitchens? Most of the Indian families these days, they are cooking with ghee. They are using uh, ghee to kind of um, make their rotis wet or soft or the dosa wet or the so or soft, you know, ghee. We have, we are using more and more ghee every day than we used to do maybe a hundred years ago. You know, dairy, dairy is kind of um, an integral part in most of the Indian households, we have milk, butter, chach, um, you know, buttermilk, paneer, and, and when we go out to eat pizza, there is uh, cheese there. There are so many different varieties of, you know, yogurt. So in, on Indian plates, we have lots and lots of dairy right now. Oil, of course, Diwali is around the corner and we all need an excuse of making puris and kachori and whatnot, right? So, and we have um, all the packaged foods. What do we do when we have a loved one visiting us? The first thing we do is we open a packet of biscuits or we open a packet of haldiram or any kind of bhujia, you know, and we serve them with a cup of tea uh, with lots of sugar and milk and everything in there. So these are the, you know, this today's diet is, does not match what a traditional Indian diet used to look like. So diet and its effects on Indian population. Yes, it affects our health. We all are seeing this, right? So we have started to add more and more a Western style diet, sodas, juices, added sugar, refined carbohydrate, processed foods, dairy, meat consumption has increased, oil, ghee, butter, fried fruits, fried foods, everything has increased. So as a result, we see more and more of childhood obesity, overweight and obesity in adults, hypertension, type two diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, high cholesterol, cancers, and earlier monarchy, all these things and many more are increasing as our diet patterns are changing, right? So now, of course, as Indians, we accumulate more and more of fat in our bodies, right? So I cannot change my genes. What can I do? So Dr. Dean Ornish, he put it very beautifully. He said, your genes are not your fate. If you change your lifestyle, you can change your genes. So here I would want to just, um, say that if we think of our genes as the on and off buttons, the switch that, you know, so your lifestyle can make it happen. You can turn on some genes and you can turn off a few genes, right? If there was, let's say type two diabetes, uh, it's a, you have a family history of type two diabetes. So you might have, you are at a high risk of getting type two diabetes, but if you, are on a whole food plant-based diet or you make your lifestyle modifications, you can turn off those genes. You can actually um, have those genes not express themselves in your life. So that is how the lifestyle matters. 
So there are simple two steps. This is how <laughs> I see it. There are two steps to take care of your health. One is eat nutrient rich food, which we all know. Equally important is remove the disease causing foods. So what are we doing? We have we rely on the um, most of us rely on the WhatsApp or the Facebook Gyan, you know, or the just okay, add, you know, somebody would say add methi water. You know, you would just go and boil the fenugreek seeds and start to drink that, you know. There are so many things that we start to add to our diet without realizing that equally important, we have to remove the disease causing foods as well. So here um, I have a quiz. Just um, let's analyze ourselves. What do you think? How would you describe your current diet or lifestyle? Your options are, you might say, I eat healthy. I can do better or I can use expert guidance on how to eat healthy or I go to the doctor for medications, but I'm not very enthusiastic about changing my lifestyle. Okay, so I think uh, we have 78% people voted. So let me just share the results. So 50% uh, feel that they can do better. Mm -hmm. uh, 20% uh, say they eat healthy, and then 29% say I can use expert guidance on how to eat healthy. All right. So this quiz was, was mainly because we don't even think about that there are options or what am I doing? You know, we are, all of us as, uh, are so busy in our lives, like Vinay and I, we were discussing before we started the webinar, that we as immigrants, you know, we are doing so much. We are trying to uh, be grandparents to our kids. We are trying to be parents. We are their chauffeurs, cleaners. We are doing each and everything. So we, you know, this is just, this was just a moment to look back and see what, you know, where we stand in terms of diet or lifestyle. So step one, as I said, eat nutrient rich foods. In nutrient rich foods, I mean, eat lots of whole grains, lentils, um, lots of vegetables, variety of fruits. You know, there should be color on your plates. It should not be um, just one color. I'm eating just bananas today or I'm just eating apples today. Add color to your life, add color to your uh, plates. And very important, remove the disease causing foods. We have seen that we accumulate more and more fat in our body as opposed to other groups, right? So what are we doing we are you know we are supposed to be when we when i say disease causing foods so please remove the animal based foods that includes eggs fish meat um, you know dairy in any form it can be in your chocolate it can be in your cookies and it can be in your bakery just remove it from your diet we need to remove sugar oil added sodium you know added salt that we are used to of sprinkling on our um, maybe salads or fruits or wherever you add it so just cut back on these things so now the question um you know before anybody asks me in the uh, question and answer session i would want to address it myself dairy because dairy had been a an, an integral part in our lives right while growing up like i remember at my uh, parents house we used to have a cow and um, it, it was you know i was so proud that i used to consume lots of milk when growing up so dairy uh, as per oxford dictionary the definition is uh, understanding milk you know an opaque white fluid rich in fat and protein secreted by ma female mammals for the nourishment of their young so when mammals are big enough to go find their own food, they don't need their mother's milk. For example, cow is not our biological mother. So I think we do not need cow's milk. Dr. Michael Clapper has put it very beautifully. He says, people are the only animals that drink the milk of the mother of another species. All other animals stop drinking milk altogether after weaning. It is natural for unnatural for a dog to nurse from a mother giraffe. It is just as unnatural for a human being to drink the milk of a cow. So now the question arises that milk or, or, or you know, the animal 
animal based foods they have protein they do have protein i agree with that and we all of us we need protein uh, protein you know there are some differences between animal based foods and plant based foods so that's what i'm going to discuss animal based foods are the number one source of saturated fat in our diets most of us know that we should be avoiding saturated fats in our diets right so there are few exceptions in uh, plant based foods too that have saturated fat for example coconuts palm oil canola oil you know all these things have uh, saturated fat so saturated fat is actually responsible for atherosclerosis or, or what you call uh, the plaques it is responsible for heart attacks high cholesterol type 2 diabetes so we need to steer away from the animal based foods milk protein it triggers the insulin like growth factors formation which is actually igf uh, the higher igf levels they act like fertilizers for certain kind of cancers actually uh, most cancers that's what if you are um, if you love to read please go and find the book the china study by dr campbell and it explains um, this phenomena in detail so there are hormones female hormones which which is estrogen so what happens when do the mil, uh, you know when do the mammals produce milk they produce milk after they have had the baby and when a female is pregnant they have higher levels of estrogen right so and when they are lactating at that time also the hormone estrogen is at a higher level and these days because of the dairy industry even when the cows are pregnant they are being milked right so still we are pumping milk from the cows when they are pregnant so higher estrogen levels these are documented well documented um, associated with higher levels of you know higher cases of breast cancer and the prostate cancer now milk um, what it does is animal based protein it increases the acid load and our body wants to stay you know it, it wants to kind of maintain its acid level to a normal so what it does is it in, it, it it needs calcium to buffer that acid load and the Give calcium the sorry yeah. did you see anything okay so uh, and uh, that as that calcium comes from our bones which is not good for the health either right now one might say that i like to eat healthy so i use skim milk in my uh, household skim milk still has two problems one is animal based protein that is too much protein for our kidneys to handle another thing is it has lactose which is sugar you know which is already there in the milk and that is again not good for if you have diabetes or you know you have weight problems so now we come to the plant protein um, some people ask me where do you get your protein from so the thing is plants do have protein okay and whole food plant based diet provides all the protein that our body needs not only this this is more favorable because when we are eating uh, protein from the plants we are it is typically ingested alongside with other plant products such as fiber phytonutrients and antioxidants which are actually really helpful right so now <clears throat> this is uh, one thing i like to discuss one of the questions that is frequently asked can being slim and extreme activity overcome poor diet so the simple answer is no so these are the outliers this um, what you see on the slide this is um, maasai tribe maasai tribe the majority inhabit uh, inhabit in the area between southern kenya and uh, northern tanzania and the population that was studied was below 44 years of age their average cholesterol level was around total cholesterol 130 which is a very good number so high blood pressure was very uncommon they were very slim uh, with a bmi averaging 20 normal ekgs no, normal ecgs but normal physical exam but if any of the physicians can you know physicians can 
uh, attest to this thing that you know uh, even if with normal physical exam or the normal ekg one might still drop dead uh, within one week uh, suffering from a heart disease so their lifestyle is uh, you know if we were to match their lifestyle we would have to walk 19 kilometers or 12 miles per day and they they are at a relative caloric deficiency so men's diet was is rich in milk not in meat but milk so can being being slim and extreme activity overcome a poor diet no it cannot the autopsy of 50 men showed extensive plaque built up in their um, you know around their heart so this is something that we need to be aware of looking slim and being um, within the actual uh, you know um, like the college of endocrinology said you know having less body fat percentage is more important than how you look so being healthy you know that comes from what is on your plates now the diet that we are talking about it uh, you know those who are trying to be on low carb or you know there are different kinds of diets we talk about so here i want to tell you that yes a whole food plant based diet most of the calories around 85% of the calories come from carbohydrates so let's not be scared of the carbohydrates let's understand them so carbohydrates they are the preferred fuel for the cells if your car runs on um, you know petrol you do not want to um, add diesel to your tank right so this is the preferred fuel for the cells best carbohydrates are those with which are low glycemic index carbohydrates now how do you know that it is a low uh, glycemic index uh, you know food if it has fiber more the fiber less would be the glycemic index this is just in general i'm telling you otherwise i can spend a couple of hours just explaining what low glycemic index food looks like and we need to avoid the refined carbohydrates refined carbohydrate carbohydrates are those which are processed highly processed carbohydrates and they have they lack fiber okay so carbohydrates there was this observational study done uh, on diabetic death rates and diet so this was done in 1920s 30s and at that time in united states whatever we were eating 36% of the uh, calories were coming from fat 51% calorie coming from carbs similar in holland a little better in england and then scotland as you can see 28% of the calories coming from fat and 57% from carbohydrates italy 18% from fat and 65% from carbohydrates and japan only 5% calories coming from fat and around 85% of the calories coming from carbohydrates as we all know in japan they have more dependency on um, rice yams you know and we talked about this previously if you remember that um, okinawa island in japan that is one of the islands that, which have been studied a lot you know their dietary patterns have been studied a lot because of how they eat so <clears throat> with all this difference you can see the di diabetes related death rates were the maximum in us and going down 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 they were almost uh, you know negligible in japan in the population of japan because of how much calories coming from fat they are important so before we leave um, i'll leave you with uh, a few of the healthy tips eat fresh salads and fruits with each meal breakfast included always cut a few apples you know when you're eating whatever breakfast you are eating cook at home involve your family if you are busy both partners are working you know and you have a very busy household involve your family ask your kids to come and help you 30 minutes every day in the kitchen or maybe 15 minutes let them have the duties of maybe cutting a few fruits and you know store them in the refrigerator cut the fruits and store them in the refrigerator or maybe help you boil the lentils or do whatever you like you know or maybe clean up the kitchen just involve your family 
whenever you are traveling pack your own food do not make it an excuse to be eating you know whatever we find on the road another trick uh, while traveling is where, wherever you go whatever town whatever city whatever country first thing do not look for a mcdonald's or a dunkin donuts or whatever uh, food joints you like you know go to the grocery shopping go to the grocery shop and have an electric cooker with you where you can boil the lentils where you can boil the rice and you know add some fresh fruits and vegetables to that and you have a whole meal for the shopping tips this is what i think that make healthy choices starting from your own grocery shopping so each and every dollar that you spend in the grocery shop you are voting for your health you can think about investing that money on your health or vice versa eat before you go shopping whenever we go shopping and we are hungry we are more tempted to buy uh, what we otherwise would uh, call it as unhealthy food do not stop in the middle aisles Mid by middle aisles i mean you know when you uh, enter grocery shops most of the healthy stuff the fresh produce it is stored at the back and while going there we come across the aisles which have types of different types of chips different types of sodas different types of processed foods so avoid those aisles buy from the fresh produce section and the bulk section join your local community supported agriculture and if you don't know of any csa in your community please google it up or go to the local farmers market ask around farmers market has some of the very fresh produce you know and the seasonal ones too at that so these are life giving things please invest your time and money wisely thank you and if you have any questions um and yes as um, vinay had told me i wanted to let you know that i have usually if you web, uh, visit my website namastearogya.com i have ongoing workshops that i do for free you know it's a community service so most of the people that come to my workshops either they have weight problems or cholesterol problems type 2 diabetes high blood pressure and we have achieved good results through you know i guide uh, through whole food plant based nutrition uh, lifestyle so any questions um yeah uh, okay. thank you very much for the interesting topic um we have few questions let me um see what we have um Veda Amalkar says, thank you all for organizing this important topic. Uh, we are glad that we could have uh, guests like Komo uh, visit us and give these presentations. Um, and um, uh, I think regarding the slides, as I mentioned already, you can download from the handout section uh, where I place the handouts. You can also, you will also get it in the follow-up email as well. Uh, Asian BMI cutoff is it based on WHO criteria? Murali student. Sorry, uh, is it uh, based on? Uh, is it based on uh, World Health Organization criteria? So this is, uh, I think mm -hmm. this was some studies. Statistically, these studies were done. You know, uh, I don't know. I haven't found it on the WHO. I don't. I haven't. My I got gathered my information on. The papers, those were, you know, written on the, um, the papers are written on the bottom of each and every slide. I think you're getting the handouts, right? So over there, it would mention where the data comes from. So South Asian studies, they were done separately. And this study, uh, you can even look up on, uh, you know, there is this clinic called Sathi, S-A-A-T-H-I or S-A-T-H-I. Stanford has started it. It is all based on the South Asian cutoffs and you know how our health is different from others. So that clinic, um, you know, it I think tackles with the heart diseases in South Asian um, population. Uh, I hope I, I, I uh, you know. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so does South Asia mean India? The reason I ask is used, uh, it is used interchangeably in the slides. Sorry? Uh, Mahesh asked, does South Asian mean India? The reason I ask it is used interchangeably in the slides. 
Yes, South Asia means, you know, South Asian group is India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives. This is all South Asia. So, okay. yeah, we are part of that. Kamal, uh, so will you get a chance to go through supplements like NAD, magnesium, etc.? I guess not. In this. Right. So we try to get all our um, micro and macro nutrients from our diet. The only supplements that you would need is B12, vitamin B12. That is, you know, you can get 5,000 um, micrograms a week. That's how much we need. Thank you. Um, Kamal has removed dairy. Uh, how about dahi? Dahi is, again, it is a part of, right, if it is coming from uh, dairy, if it is coming from another animal's milk, if that is the base, then I would say no to dahi. You can always make uh, plant-based dahi. You know, there are different recipes online. Uh, people have made, though I do not recommend those because they are high in fat. You know, more, most of the calories come from fat. But yeah, try to avoid all the uh, dairy, you know, dairy and dairy products, ice creams, dahi, uh, chach, buttermilk, you know, um, cream cheese, cheese, butter, whatever, you know, is used uh, in the households. Uh, Ravi, I ask, in Japan, don't they eat fish? All right. So this is um, not, see, this. all these studies are done in Okinawa, Japan before 1985. So majority of the diet was whole food plant-based diet. Yes, they eat fish, but it's not their main staple and it's not done on each and every island. So every household is different. Every island is different. That's what I would say. So before 1985, the diet was mainly whole food plant-based diet. After 1985, you know, all these, um, the multinational chains like McDonald's and all these things seeped into Japan. And now there is something what we see as an increasing trend of type 2 diabetes, obesity, overweight, all these things have come into being. But yes, fish, if you want to know that if it is healthy, if it, it is not a healthy food, um, people do say that it is good for omega-3. So I would say there are plant-based alternatives for omega-3. You can use I mean, I know this was not included in your question, but still for the audience, for omega-3, you can use walnuts, you can use chia seeds, you can, uh, you know, grind the flax seeds. Those are better than the fish. Um, next question is, is drinking oatmeal, oat milk or almond milk better option than cow's milk? Yes, it definitely is. You know, moving away from animal-based, because animal-based foods are the only dietary cholesterol that we add into our you know bodies cholesterol does not come from plant-based foods lentils would not have any cholesterol um, you know cholesterol is something that our body needs it so it adjusts its own level right but we do not we are not made to add cholesterol from outside so um, yes oat milk is good almond milk is good I would prefer that if you could make these things at home, almond milk, it just takes five minutes to produce a gallon of um, almond milk. You can, again, you can go to my website. I have a YouTube video done on almond milk. You can try that. Um, otherwise, if you are to buy something, you know, outside, um, from outside, then I would highly recommend for women, um, you know, who are menopausal, please go for soy milk. Thank you. Thank you. I think Mayesh also asked about almond milk substitute. And uh, Aruna asked, can you please suggest a good oil to use for Indian cooking? <laughs> no oil is the best option. You know, don't use any oil. I cook without oil and it's not difficult. Not at all. Okay. Try to can keep, you? this is what I say, keep mm -hmm. the oil in the bathroom. It is good for massage. It's good for massaging our hair and body. Uh, it's not good in the food. Can you, just, can you shed some light on migraine causes and diet? On migraine? Yeah. Okay, so migraine is largely, largely associated with um, dairy. 
if you remove dairy from your diet you would see an improvement in your migraines okay. and you can also do one thing that uh, again in the resource pages i have listed out uh, on my website there's this website called nutritionfacts.org it is run by uh, dr michael greger so what he does is he him and his team they go through all the scientific evidence and the papers and then they make short videos and they have many resources there so you can go to that website and in the search just write down migraine and it will tell you all about it what to avoid and what not to thank you i'm a diabetic is there a limit to fruit sugar consumption and fats from nuts just being asked all right so um any kind of diabetes type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes uh, so diabetes dr neil barnard you know he uh, did an extensive research on this so the main reason would be fat the intramyocellular lipid the fat in our you know muscle cells so if you can avoid animal based products and oils then you do not need to avoid the fruits or the you know with the nuts the thing is it's kind of uh, in the initially like when people come to my uh, workshops initially we try to avoid the nuts because we are trying to clear your cells of of any fat that that have been accumulated there once you get a good hold of your um, blood sugar readings like you come your fasting is around 100 and your a1c falls you know within the good range so then you can actually add nuts. Nuts are good for health, especially um, walnuts. Walnuts are associated with, men eating walnuts are associated with having low um, cardiovascular diseases. Um, grains are not the same as grains eaten 50 years ago with pre prevalence of GMO, also considered as leading cause of allergies. What is your opinion on that? That is true. That is true that, you know, with the gmo coming into you know our lives it has made a big difference so i can tell you um, i can give you a few tips that i use myself also if you have like in the new england area we have cooperative stores so cooperative stores if you go to any first of all let's not hesitate to do things that we usually are shy of doing go whatever grocery store you go to you go and talk to them that i need to buy my um, let's say brown rice or rajma whatever i need to buy them in bulk but i need organic so negotiate a price you know you would always get a better price so do what we used to do in india negotiate the price and choose as much as organic you can a few of the things that you should not be taking um, you know which are not organic is i would say um, soya bean please always buy those organic second thing is strawberry third is uh, corn corn even the other day i, I was watching this um, documentary called gmo omg so if you have time you know it might might be available on netflix so over there they um, showed this truth that um, the non-organic the conventional corn is not even identified as uh, edible product it is uh, identified as a pesticide so grains yes try to buy as many as organic otherwise if you cannot it's fine you know but yes that is hurting our health but the most hurt comes from the animal based foods um i heard not to eat fruits along with cooked food is it correct um i see in every uh, diet is different you can say or everybody is trained differently i have heard about this you know when people are i think in ayurveda or something um, you know when they follow that diet but in whole food plant based diet that is not the case we actually encourage you to eat raw fruits and vegetables with each and every meal you talked about milk containing hormones how about organic milk organic milk still comes from cow the animal is much larger than we are right so the, we are still dealing with the estrogen that the cow's milk actually produces naturally so again the answer simple answer is no please don't uh, fall for that that this is organic milk or not organic the thing is 
if it is coming from animals, it's not good. Okay, I think there's several uh, questions on milk. I'll just go through some so that we can go to the next topic. So can we replace cow milk with almond or soy milk? I think you said about that yes, earlier. Yes, so, anything yeah. that is, um, you know, that comes from plants is better than if it comes from animals. I think more substitute for milk. And uh, I think somebody asked, any brands suggest for soy milk? What is the recommended quantity to consume? Uh, any brand for? So I suggest you that you suggest for soy milk. Or no, I would not suggest any brand, uh, but I what I can say is please read the labels very carefully. We do not be we do not need um, it. You know, when there says it says ingredients, right? There there are two uh, things. One is nutrition facts. One is ingredients. Read the ingredients very carefully. Top three ingredients should not contain sugar of any kind because they are listed by weight. That is what the FDA suggests them to do so. So try to buy uh, the milk that does not have any flavoring to it or added sugars. Thank you. I have only one question. By eating raw foods or salads, I heard that there are high acidic symptoms developed in people. How true is it? Yeah, see, the thing is, uh, one thing, listen to your body. If, you know, somebody might get, um, acid reflux you know by eating oranges the other person might not get those but the key reason for getting the acidity is lies in our diet please if you have acidity i would suggest that um, remove the oils remove fat from your uh, you know dinner plate in any form it can be animal based it can be plant based just remove it okay and another thing i would suggest is apple cider vinegar apple cider vinegar actually fights um, acidity whenever you know somebody is exper experiencing acidity you can dilute um, you know a teaspoon or two maybe full uh, in water you know acv and then drink it and you would get the relief but yeah the main reason sometimes acidity um, reason lies somewhere else it's in the fat that we are consuming it might not be um, in in the other you know fruits and vegetables I think you already suggested buying organic lentils, right? So that's one. Yeah. What curds is no. Right. I would yeah. prefer buying organic, but it's not always uh, feasible, you know, because uh, sometimes they are not available. Sometimes they are too costly, you know. But this is how I see it. If you are consuming ten things in a day, even two of them are organic, so you have actually, you know, made a change, right? So that is what you can do. And another thing I would want to leave uh, the audience with is that on whole food plant-based diet you can actually eat pasta you know if you are following this diet um, this is a very yummy diet this is what my experience is i have three kids uh, they are teenagers and uh, we switched to this lifestyle a few uh, you know time back and this is actually a beautiful lifestyle and you would see improvements um, thanks for the wonderful talk, Dr. Komal. Do we need to soak two dal before we cook? Uh, it depends upon what kind of dal it is. We are talking about the lentils, right? Yes. Okay, so it depends upon what kind of dal it is. And uh, if it, you know, of course, if it is the chickpeas or the rajma or, you know, such kind of legumes, then it's always better to soak them. For better uh, boiling otherwise you know it, it really uh, again it depends upon what kind of dal it is can you please let us know what all you have in your pantry stores you buy from stores yeah. that i buy from i go to farmers market a lot uh, in the summers that is where i get my vegetables from i get uh, from the local organic uh, csa that is again, if you are in the Concord area, you know, New, New Hampshire area, then you can go to my website and under the my local community partners, that is where I go to. And then I go to the cooperative store a lot. So I figured out that if I was buying organic uh, lentils from my Indian grocery store, they were costlier than when I get them uh, in bulk from my local cooperative store. So I, this is 
what I do. I'm not fixated to many stores. I usually go by, um, you know, what they have to offer. Uh, even though we follow a vegetarian diet and pretty much healthy diet, why does cholesterol level increase? Cholesterol, again, in our diet, it comes from uh, animal-based foods. If you have high cholesterol trouble, then I would suggest zero oil, zero animal-based foods, more and more fiber-rich foods, for example, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, um, and exercise. That those are the remedies, you know, meditate, exercise, go for a walk, at least 30 minutes. If if you are on a zero exercise regime right now, then add at least 30 minutes of exercise to your daily routine. Is vegetarian protein powder good for health? No, um, actually we are not, I do not recommend any protein, um, you know, isolated proteins, because isolated protein, whether it comes from animal based or whether it is plant based, these are associated with higher rates of insulin resistance, which means type two diabetes. So think of it like this, you know, if in an orchestra, there are, um, there is violinist, there is, you know, somebody playing flute, somebody playing drums, somebody playing something, you know, and all of a sudden that is like our diet, you know, diet has to be full uh, in every way. So instead of that, when we just try to isolate, let's just have drums, you know, that might not actually uh, be good for our health. So do not overdo protein, do not overdo any isolated you know, this is protein isolated, um, you know, all the those syrups and the powders that come into, if that was your question, please no. Have a well-balanced meal and that is what would be healthful uh, overall. Should we cut off fats like sesame oil, etc., completely from our diet? Can we use oil for third cause? What is the recommended measure for oil? And a similar question, I think, uh, um, how do we make dry curry without uh, oil? Right, so um, zero oil would mean that you remove the oil from your kitchen, okay? Mm -hmm. Sesame, um, this is, let, let me put it this way. So the nature gave us sesame seeds and the factories, they extracted oil from the sesame, right? So that is a not a, whole food that is actually a processed food when it comes to oils so when doing the tarka all i need is heat how much heat i can control on your on my pan right so whenever there is a pan i let's say i want to um, you know roast some jeera i can do it you know do the dry roasting it needs heat more than it needs oil even if you know if you are not scared to try what you can do is at uh, at most um have a little ball of uh, water by your side and a teaspoon so i haven't done this because i'm you know i'm happy with how i cook i just have a dry pan and i put whatever you know jeera or tomatoes whatever are needed in there and they cook fine but if you're scared that you know you might burn something then add a teaspoon of water at a time and uh, cook on a medium flame and it, it's just actually it's more of a leap of faith than you know burning the stuff nothing nobody even notices it there's no difference um, is tamarind which is widely used in south asian recipes like sambar it's a good for health or to be re replaced with anything uh, sorry uh, what thing are we lo looking tamarind? at tamarind tamarind Tam yeah, tamarind is good. Tamarind, no problem in tamarind. Just as long as it does not have added sugar or added salt. Do you have some, so do you have some good quick recipes for uh, WFPB on your website uh, for busy families? Time is a big constraint. Right. Time is a big constraint. Similar thing, I think most of us are in the similar um, aspect. Yes, there are tons of recipes on my resource page. One of the, um, the, the, what we cook at home, uh, my kids, they are very much, my whole family is involved in the kitchen. So they have their own blog called um, ourveganrasoi.com. You can go there. If you are a video kind of person, then there are Chef AJ recipes. 
There are recipes by um, Jane Esselstyn. You will find all these things in the resource pages. But one of the tricks that I can tell you, my husband gave me um, an electric cooker as a gift. And I think that is, uh, I was so reluctant to use it, but then once I started using it, it can save you a lot of time. I soak beans in the night time and put it on the delay timer. By the time I get up, all the beans are done. They are cooked. So half of my job is already done there. So try that. And quick recipes are, you know, just boil some rice um, in a maybe brown rice. I'm not talking about the basmati rice that we use. Basmati rice lacks the fiber that it was actually grown with. And then that is a refined carbohydrate. So switch to brown rice and um, just have boiled lentils, brown rice and some cut salad. You can use pre-cut uh, versions of the salad from the store. There are tons of, uh, you know, fresh uh, cut salads, fresh uh, frozen uh, produce. You can be on a whole food plant-based diet and having no time at the same time to cook. Both things that can go hand in hand together. Um, there's a lot more questions. Uh, some says, some say ghee is good for brain development and improve memory. Is ghee an issue for health? Any specific foods are particularly healthy? Yes, ghee is an issue for health. One, saturated fat, right? It it actually solidifies at the room temperature. It has saturated fat. Second, it comes from animals, so that which means it has um, added. You know, it is adding cholesterol to our um, and. There is no written document that ghee is good for our brain. What we need is, what our kids need is omega-3. Omega-3 comes from, you can write it down, give them or eat a handful of walnuts each day. Add more and more, um, you know, chia seeds to your salads. You can add, um, you can buy the uh, flax seeds and grind them put them in the fridge and use it one teaspoon at a time you know maybe you can uh, add it to your morning oats or whatever you like to eat you know or you can just drink it with water whatever you like so you need omega-3 that is what the documents say what is that what this is what the scientific evidence says so let's switch to the plant-based sources of omega-3 rather than relying on ghee um, is fat from coconut bad for us? Yes, saturated fat. Most of the calories in uh, coconut uh, come from saturated fat. Is B12 5000 milligrams suggested for daily supplement or once a week? It's once a week. If you get a thousand milligram um, tablets, you know, eat those five times a week, 15, um, 100, then eat them thrice a week, you know, whatever. That's the one week uh, regime, you know, 5000. What are the probiotic alternatives for the heat? Okay. Um, so you, we need to take care of our gut bacteria, right? That is what we are talking about when we talk about probiotics or the prebiotics. So um, let's focus on eating more fiber and giving all the bacteria that is in there. That bacteria is millions of years old. It does not depend upon any of the pharmaceuticals or anything. No probiotic or prebiotic tablets should be given. That is what the uh, scientific evidence says, unless somebody was sick or had um, been on a course of antibiotics, right? So eat more and more fiber rich foods, each and every thing that you eat, what grows on the tree, what grows on the shrubs, what grows on the plants, what grows under the, um, you know, earth, whatever, you know, everything cultivates different kind of bacteria. And that is what we need. Just feed your bacteria good food. Don't worry about that bacteria is already there unless you have had a course of antibiotics. Um, and there's several people who are thanking for the presentation and insight. Um, I think soybeans and soy milk, you're already specified, right? Um, that, that's an alternative. Uh, yeah. Where do we get calcium from if not dairy? dairy? And uh, the other question similar was, we are drilled into our head that drinking milk and the need for calcium for growing healthy bones is important, especially for children. What is yes. the alternative for children for 
uh, important yes. healthy brown uh, if you just go online google it kale nutrition facts you know uh, or, or anything all the calcium all the protein all the requirements that we need for a growing body they are actually already there in the um, plant-based foods so what we need to focus on is if you have children which are actually growing children under the age of 18 or 19 then their calories have also to come from uh, nuts and seeds give them more um, dry fruits you know calcium don't worry about it whole food plant-based diet is actually it's a balanced diet all the herbivore animals look at uh, the biggest herbivore animals the elephants the um, maybe you know blue whale you know all these are herbivore animals and they get their calcium and protein from the same sources that we are going to get from you know which is whole food plant-based diet i think nature did not intend us to be dependent on processed food processed food came into being just maybe in the last more in the last 50 to 100 years before that there never used to be uh, this much so for growing kids i would say if they want if you want to switch to a whole food plant based diet give them more handle on uh, dry fruits and nuts and exercise that is what is going to make their bones stronger uh, next question is i'm habitual of milk tea i get headache when i don't take it what to do Yes, you are getting the headaches not because of the um, milk, maybe because uh, you know, you know, sometimes the all the caffeine in the tea that calls for us. So try not adding the milk. If you want to add milk, then go for the almond milk. Make almond milk at home. You know, it would taste the same. It tastes actually better. If anybody knows, um, like I am from Punjab, and in Punjab there is a thing called kadha hua milk. You know where. Uh, uh, the halwai you know they have milk they would just boil it down to you know till it's it's half the taste you know half the quantity so that is what the almond milk actually tastes like you know homemade almond milk don't rely on the store-bought ones they have other ingredients which i cannot pronounce and which my body doesn't need so make almond milk at home and try to go for green tea uh, caffeine can actually disrupt your sleep taken at any time and that might also be causing the headaches so it's kind of a withdrawal time give yourself a withdrawal time you know and the most beautiful thing is that our taste buds they have the capacity to change and rely on that capacity that your taste buds are going to change so give it a try and your headaches would be gone i was the similar way you know if i did not get a cup of tea i would have migraines and then when I switched my diet, now maybe once a year, twice a year, something like that, which have actually increased, you know, it used to be twice or thrice a week. From there to having migraines twice or thrice a year, you know, I would trade that, right? So. Um, Ramal asked, what about intermittent fasting? Have you tried it? Do you recommend? yes i do recommend especially uh, for anybody at least you know it is said 16 8 uh, 16 is to 8 is the ratio you know 16 hours of fasting eight hours of calorie intake but it depends be very careful about what i am saying here if somebody is a type 2 diabetic we do not recommend it straight away i would say eat your meals before 7 p.m and do not eat any calorie dense um, you know any calories after that no milk no tea nothing just drink water if you like but if you if somebody is a type 2 diabetic there might be a chance of getting into hypoglycemia state if they are not on whole food plant based low fat diet so if you are on a whole food plant based diet already managing your type 2 diabetes with that then uh, you can go for up to 16 hours of fasting every day uh, eating sweet fruits like oranges, bananas, also eating rice and potatoes is considered bad for diabetes. Is it true? No, carbohydrates are not linked with. Yes, it was before 2006. This was what we learned. We learned 
eat frequent meals, uh, avoid carbohydrates, you know, and still type 2 diabetes was on the increase. And then Dr. Neil Barnard's, um, uh, you know, lab, when they hit this revolutionizing, you know, uh, data, that it's actually the fat in our cells that is causing the insulin resistance. It is not the carbohydrate. More and more calories coming from carbohydrates are good, but if you are type 2 diabetic, please avoid ripe bananas, avoid pineapples, and avoid watermelons. Thank you. I think this also answers Mahesh's question about Western physicians recommend low carb diet for someone diagnosed with diabetics. Um, please don't yeah, please, okay. nobody, please, I, I, that's why I covered the carbohydrates. Do not go for low-carb diet. It's not good for your heart. You can search it up. There are millions of studies done on this. There is ample evidence. It's well-documented. Do not avoid carbohydrates. More and more calories should come from carbohydrates. That is low glycemic index carbohydrates, um, rich in fiber. Do not avoid fiber, please. When you are cooking, but whatever you are eating, it should be low in fat. It should be high in fiber. It should be, um, you know, zero added oils, zero added sugar. That is how, you know, we kind of uh, go about it. Um, I came across research or, or trends that wheat related stuff is not good for health and digestion. Can you let us know your opinion? Wheat or gluten? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, Right, so there are two things. One is, you know, some people really have celiac disease, which is gluten allergy. So most of us, we go to the stores and we see oh, gluten-free, gluten-free, gluten-free. So it rings a bell. Oh, gluten, it might be causing some trouble. Trouble lies somewhere else, usually in our diets. So if you really feel you have, you know, gluten allergies you should talk to your doctor and get an expert opinion on that otherwise what i know is gluten in itself you know wheat and all the gluten rich foods you know they have their own kind of microbiome they um, give place to a certain kind of bacteria in our gut so it has been seen that um, that gut bacteria is really important because it makes when you are on a plant-based uh, diet, you know, the gut bacteria may, uh, makes SCFA, which is called short chain fatty acids. And they are the ones who are running the whole show. You know, they um, stabilize our mood. They help us uh, to protect from certain kind of cancers. They help us protect from colon cancer. They help us protect from many things, you know, many of the chronic diseases. So um, let's not avoid gluten in case, just look at your diet. And if you really need help, you can join one of my um, upcoming webinars or upcoming um, you know, workshops and we can talk about it. But I would not recommend avoiding gluten unless you have gluten allergies like celiac disease. Um. How can we control acidity with plant-based diet? Eating lentils make me so acidic. And I think uh, somebody also asked a um, similar question, lentils and gastric issue. Uh, lentils Latin. and gastric issues. If you think that we are talking about gas, right? Um, lentils can cause gas, but that happens only in the first one week. NASA did this study. Actually, NASA did, and it is well documented. Uh, NASA did it because the astronauts, those who were going up there, so they were talking that we need partners who have less gas issues because you know there was no ventilation. So that's where this study came from. So when you are eating lentils, you know there is 35%, there might be 35% of increase because you have more gut bacteria. Now there's more activity going on in your guts, right? But if you don't like that, you can always add, um, there's thing called kombu, K-O-M-B-U. That is what people, uh, you know, you, you just buy it online. You can buy it from Amazon. You can add a little bit of it to your lentils when boiling those, and that reduces the gas issues. Now coming to the acidity part, acidity we have already covered, you know, it comes by
by uh, adding more and more sugar and fatty foods to your diet. It does not have anything to do with your lentils. Uh, any comment on coconut milk? No coconut milk, please. Um, let's switch to, if you are to go for a store-bought milk, go for soy milk. Soy, soya bean is, um, it protects from breast cancer. It protects from prostate cancer in, you know, in males, it's really protective. And there was this study about soya milk, those who might be afraid of soy, soy and soy products around men. There was this study done um, back 10 years ago, which said uh, men should not be consuming soy products. And that was because of, um, you know, there was some sperm count issues that came across. But now the studies have come along that soy is actually protective for uh, men. And there's a whole um, discussion. And, uh, you know, there's this book called Hormones in Balance or My Body in Balance by Dr. Neil Barnard. It covers the soya bean thing, but long story short, go for, um, if you are to buy the store-bought milk, go for soy milk. If you, are, if you can spare five minutes a week or five minutes every four days, then make the almond walnut milk at home. Thank you. I think this answers Jasmine's question also about soya beans and so on. Uh, so should we avoid coconut altogether? Yes, that would okay. be the best best option. What is the best time to take apple cider vinegar? Anytime. If you have acidity issues, then whenever you feel, you know, I'm on the peak of acidity or the acid reflux is coming up, then go for it. Is anytime is good. Sorry, go ahead. So anytime is good time. The only care you have to take care of is after drinking um, apple cider vinegar, we have to protect our enamel, right? So go and maybe gargle, but do not brush your teeth for one hour. Um, is wild rice good? Yes, wild rice, black rice, red rice, brown rice, they are all good as long as they are still intact, you know, whole grain rice. What are your recommendations regarding masala packets used for cooking Indian dishes? Masala packet, uh, if you look at the ingredients, you know, they are really high in sodium. So what <clears throat> I have found out is, you know, like uh, need is the mother of invention. What? So there's this, um, you know, there are certain things. If we are talking about chana masala and sambar masala, all these things. So I found a very kind lady who was ready to make masalas for me. And if you write me an email, I can send you her, um, you know, details. Um, she makes the, you know, any kind of masala at home without adding any oils or without adding the salt. And because I have kids, so I um, ask, I request her to hold the spicy, you know, the hot mirchi level too. And otherwise, you can go online and there is this Khana Khajana, the Sanjeev Kapoor. He has um, videos on how to make your own chana masala. So try to make the masalas at home. And if you do not have time, then outsource this thing. You can ask, like I said, you know, I um, request this lady to make masalas for me. She lives in Texas and she can ship it to you. Uh, could you give more tips about good food choices? Good food choices, please. No, kids, kids Sorry? Food, kids food choices. Kids food choices. Uh, lots of lentils, lots of beans, and, uh, you know, uh, if your kids like, um, you know, I mean, most of the kids are similar way. Involve them in the kitchen. When they cook something, even if they are creating their own salad, they are more likely to eat it. This is the first thing, okay, if you have picky kids. Second thing, Spend more time in cutting and making, assembling the salads than cooking. So what I do is I would, this is the ideal, I, I had shown the picture in the slides that was uh, my own um, dinner plate. So what I do is boil the black beans, boil the rice and have some uh, avocado, you know, to make a guacamole and 
some fresh salad along with this and let your kids experiment you know have them if they don't like something they can spice it up with lemon juice they can you know add whatever maybe more tomatoes to it so any food that you are eating if you are eating a whole food plant based diet it is good for the whole family it's good for kids it's good for you and if you are working and you can you are worried about the lunch box buy the baby carrots buy the uh, maybe more grapes more grape tomatoes there are so many different kind of fruits which are very colorful and which are just wash and eat kind of fruits um dipali says thank you Kumal, for the question. can you shed some light on how to get calcium from plant-based food i think you mentioned earlier right kale kale right eat a well-balanced diet add colors to your diet add colors to your plate your color your plate should have at least five to eight colors minimum you know and then that is what makes sure that you are getting everything every nutrient that you need and if you are menopausal for the ladies who have who are menopausal it is said that we need more and and they are vegan or on whole food plant based diet we need more calcium so i would i usually eat tums uh, you know twice a week that's what i do um there's a few questions about oil again i think uh, um how to avoid completely I no, think oil. <laughs> no oil no uh, oil any fruit or vegetable to be avoided any fruits or vegetables yes there is one um there there are not many actually there are just a few um it's called a star fruit i think it's called a star fruit even mm -hmm. half of star fruit you know it can cause kidney damage so it is said that avoid star fruit and i don't know of many of the vegetables that we should or fruits that we should avoid um <clears throat> is peanuts good for health i would say uh it depends upon how old you are <laughs> and what is your health condition uh, you know like any nuts you know more most of the calories um, in peanuts or other nuts you know they come from fat so it is up to you to decide do you really need to add that much fat to your diet so uh, if you feel the answer is yes then please as adults you know the limit should be two tablespoons of uh, nuts and seeds in the whole day per person so be careful of that and in moderation yes you can eat any nuts um i think you already answered about uh, uh how to oh no how many days per week should we take thousand milligram omega-3 and the other question is where did omega-3 come from our indian food omega-3 comes from walnuts omega-3 comes from chia seeds omega-3 comes from um, flax seeds which is also known as alsi in hindi it's called alsi so flax seeds don't consume flax seeds because the you know our, our digestive system cannot break down the outer shell so they end up in the toilet bowl so please if you are using going to use the flax seed uh, grind them up freshly ground uh, flax meal is the best i think somebody asked should we roast the flax seeds before we grind them this is heat liable well, actually i would say I, I do not roast mine and it's not said that we should be roasting it so the only thing that you have to be careful about is after you grind it it has to be kept in the refrigerator in the airtight jar what are the plant based sources for vitamin d vitamin d um okay it comes from sun right uh, with our skin color maybe you know just 10 minutes in the sun around 2 o'clock you know having uh, half sleeves covered you know or no sleeves uh, covered gives you about 10000 international units of vitamin d but if you still feel it is not a bad idea to take a vitamin d supplement you know uh, if your blood test shows any vitamin d deficiency then of course your doctor is going to recommend you one right otherwise just uh, they are available over the counter you can go and take 1000 international units of vitamin d maybe every day it's not going to be uh, you know going overboard 
what are the options for kids who have severe nut allergies whole food plant based diet actually helps uh, with many things and if see if we know that somebody is allergic to something then we avoid it as you must be doing it right now as well but whole food plant based diets actually improves the quality of life you know um it it is preventative in many ways and i think as parents it is our responsibility not only to give them good books but also to guide them on how to eat mindfully how to eat the nutrient rich foods and what to avoid and what not to avoid so whole food plant based diet is good for um, even the kids who have nuts allergy or you know any kind of allergies um what is your take on pasteurized almonds we generally get at store versus unpasteurized almonds uh what no. kind of almonds uh when uh this pasteurized almonds so i guess heated i don't uh, heated oh, oh okay you know i don't think um there is any difference i don't know i mean if there is any because i don't know everything so um but yeah almonds are good in any shape and form the only thing that in the stores you know sometimes when you get the roasted ones they are also coated with salt and sugar or maybe sometimes they are roasted in um some kind of oil i mean who would imagine that raisins that we were buying the other day i was we were looking at the ingredient list and it contains sunflower oil so um just be careful about if you're buying almonds it should the packet should contain only the almonds not any sugar or added salt or added uh, oils is it possible to have a normal glucose fasting but a high hba1c yes it is it depends upon what you are eating it really does because it also shows that you have insulin resistance right and it also depends upon if you are on medication what time did you eat your medication what kind of medication you are on what do you think about the uh, healthy smoothies drinks i would say no to the smoothie drinks um if you can eat your food see um if you uh if anybody knows about you might maybe dr esselstein he is uh, at the cleveland clinic and he did this research on how to reverse your di- your heart disease on whole food by switching to whole food plant based diet so he recommends that we chew because when we chew especially our greens you know they help our endothelial system so i do cover all these things in my um, workshops so this is a long i can go on for one hour on this topic there is more questions but, but i think uh, if you can suggest um, like so you, you said that you have ongoing webinars and so they the, the schedule is on your website uh, where people can ask is on my website i think i am booked till march in the march i have a webinar which is uh, the spoken language is usually written there because i usually have people coming in from um, indian households so i do it in hindi punjabi and english so the english one is opening in march and the other one after that would open in september uh, that would be in hindi so you can visit my website and uh, you know uh, book uh, re- uh, like register for one of the web- webinars thank you i think um and maybe uh, two or three more questions we can take do chilies or spices contribute to acidity okay <clears throat> you know cayenne pepper cayenne pepper is known to fight actually ulcers in the tummy so that was so counterintuitive for me so you know but there are so many papers written on this that if somebody has but yes it's not only the spicy food it's um, you know having too much chilies combined with um, oils you know um, that actually contributes so if you can say no to oil in your kitchen even for one week you know i think uh, this much we owe to you know listening to each other for the last one year one hour you are listening to me so you have devoted so much time which i am thankful for and let's do this thing try oil free cooking for one week and try um, Go, saying no to the animal based products just for one week 
and then see the changes in your health your acidity level would go down your anxiety level would go down your mood would be stabilized you know there would be so many good things happening in your life um there were some questions about soy milk do soy products affect hormones in growing girls I've heard soy milk, and another question is, I've heard soy milk is not good for thyroid problems, mainly hypothyroidism. Right, so, so you are right. Soybean, actually thyroid, um, we do not avoid the soybean. The only thing that we do is that within four hours of taking this thyroid medication, do not consume any soy products, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is with the thyroid problem thing. Another thing for the thyroid, it is said that it is better to get your TSH levels regularly checked and uh, be on the strict medication regime because it's not a, a thing, you know, that it's just basically a hormone that does not, you know, our body is not producing enough, you know, it, that could be one of the problems. So we can go to the doctor and, you know, get the simple medication, but eat a well-balanced diet. That is the key avoid soy products within four hours of taking the medication. Another thing about the hormones. Yes, soybean has the hormone which mimics, you know, kind of which is which comes very close to the hormones that we have as females, the estrogen, right? But yes, in growing girls, it is better to avoid the dairy and dairy products um, and give them soy. Soy actually is very protective against the breast cancer. And once you uh, avoid, uh, you know, once you switch to the whole food plant-based diet, you would see around the growing girls, you know, whatever uh, the monthly periods and all those problems that come around, the cramping, the pains, the mood disorders, they start to disappear. So give them a low-fat plant-based diet rich in soya bean. And I think you already gave a resource for the almond milk at home, right? I think you said you have a video on your website. Yeah, yeah. I have I have very few videos on my YouTube because I'm not um, YouTube kind of a person. But the thing is, you know, sometimes because many people ask me when I tell them to make almond milk at home and it's it just takes five minutes. So they wanted me to show how it is done. So I just did it very recently. Um, okay. And... Um, I heard broccoli did not initially exist naturally, but was man-made. Any mm -hmm. thoughts? On but it is still produced in the farms, right? So eat what your farmer grows. Try not to eat what the what comes in the pre-packaged. You know what has been man-handled in in the terms like you know, if broccoli comes from the farm and it comes to your home, it is the best thing. But if you are giving it to somebody to make broccoli chips for you, then it is not the best thing. So there are many things that we did not know, right? For example, um, before coming to moving to USA, I did not know about kale. I did not know about arugula. I did, did not know about avocados. I didn't know about blueberries, you know, that there is a thing called blueberries that existed. So I think whatever the nature produces, you know, um, go for that. It's always a good idea to have a mission of introducing yourself with at least one new fresh vegetable or um, fruit, you know, a year, at least one. Um, there's two questions related to tomato. One says, is tomato acidic? And what about wheat chapati versus jowa roti, which is which one is good to consume and lose weight. The other question about tomato was, um, uh, Dr. Gundry says tomatoes and cashews are not good for us. Do you believe it too? No, I don't believe in it. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of the roti, the thing is that, see, if we are eating the wheat berries, like the whole wheat thing, then and the wheat grains or the wheat berries, they do not have a high glycemic index. But when it is processed and it is made into atta, the glycemic index rises, which is not good for the blood glucose levels. So I usually recommend for weight loss or for type 2 diabetes or for controlling your um, glyce this um, cholesterol, high blood pressure, add at least 50% of Kala Chana Basin. So I'm not talking about the yellow basin that we get. I'm talking about the Kala Chana Basin. So Kala Chana Atta, you know, you go to any Indian grocery store, they would have it. 
so add 50 percent that to any kind of atta that you are eating right now and that would reduce your weight that would help you um, you know with many things and with weight please add fresh cut salads and fruits to your diet and steer away from the animal products and the oil i heard that chia seeds should be taken soaked is it true sorry chia seeds uh, should be taken soaked is it true no no you can take chia seeds any which way you can grind them you can just freshly just sprinkle it on your salads uh, this does not need to be soaked what are the vegetarian food sources for vitamin b12 vitamin b12 usually mushrooms are good but even then you know um, we are not going to get enough vitamin b12 any vegetarians or you know um, plant based on when on plant based diet one of the reasons is that vitamin b12 is produced in our gut and it was produced with the help of uh, you know all the now we are actually in a phase where we clean everything so much you know then when there used to be little bit of dirt on whatever we are eating you know maybe take out the roots uh, you know the carrots or potatoes or whatever so that is how our bodies made it but now um, i think if you go to any stores they have plant based b12 uh, tablets they are very small tablets just take those i would say do not rely on just the natural resources like mushrooms have those but how many of the mushrooms can you eat and a lot of people um thank you for the uh, appreciate the time and effort um uh, uh, some of them have asked about the sharing of the uh, video um, um because they missed some part of the video we will be uploading the um in today's video to the not south youtube channel so you can find it there we will share the link for today's video in the follow-up email after the webinar is done um like by tomorrow morning tonight or tomorrow morning and uh Somebody asked, is honey good for health? Sorry. And honey, good for health. Honey, again, it is concentrated sugar, right? Uh, so I do not recommend honey. Um, it's, I mean, I cannot say that it is good for health. Any form of concentrated sugar is not good for our health. And even uh, steering, clay, you know, steer clear of um, going into the trap of you know adding the artificial sweeteners don't do that that is artificial sweeteners are known to uh, increase our hemoglobin a1c uh, you know which is actually a measure of type 2 diabetes or you know diabetes in general can we take castor oil to clean the stomach no you don't need to if you are eating fiber rich food you do not need to take castor oil do not take any form of oil oil in any form whether it is in a cracker or in a biscuit or any um, bakery don't add oil to your system it hurts your endothelium system it hurts us on many levels so i think there was a few other questions about the oil right so uh, i know you said that you we should avoid um, oil but the questions are like okay some of them are asking how can we do um, seasoning without oil or like how can you make doses without oil how can you make dosas without oil yeah and some are, somebody else asked we need oil for seasoning right so what is ultimately how to see i'll tell you um that this is a long road <laughs> for me yeah. this has been uh, because we like my husband loves uh, eating the chila in the morning sometimes you know so um i did not know how to cook that uh, without oil we have burned many pans and many chilas in the process but I have come across that if you invest on a good non-stick, um, you know, grill or a pan, they do the trick. You do not need to add the oil. Okay. Uh, uh, what are the suggested foods for hair loss or healthy hair? Uh, sorry, um, Vinay, I didn't understand the question. Hair loss or healthy hair? I mean, like, what is suggested foods? For I healthy guess, hair? I guess the um, plant-based diet itself is... Yeah. Or, so you are talking about healthy hair right yeah. so if the hair in women if we are you know losing hair please get your thyroid level checked that is what i would say 
and whole food plant based diet with lots and lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and kind different kinds of lentils and brown rice it is one of the best diets you would come across your skin would improve if you have breakouts on your skin they would improve if you have weight issues whatever chronic diseases one might have or there is a higher possibility because of the family history you know we would be, we can prevent all those things the last two questions are soaked sabja seeds are okay to eat on empty stomach seeds sabja seeds soaked sabja seeds are okay to eat on empty stomach i um like this is what i would say that there are many things that we have been doing for ages right i did not understand what kind of seeds we are talking about here but um i would say you can again you know there is a limit to how much seeds uh, or nuts in total an adult can eat if it falls within that range then yes please go ahead and eat last question about eating avocado how much we can add in our meal and frequency okay again it depends upon your health condition and your age if somebody has a heart disease which means they have had a heart attack or are more like Uh, likely to have a heart attack or are overweight then i would say steer clear of the avocado because avocado mainly the uh, calories come from fat but if you are a kid and or you have healthy body and you know everything then um, for children there is no limit but for adults one fourth to half an avocado per day per person not more than that Thank you. I think several of them expressed thanks for the presentation. Um, uh, Geeta Chitti writes, "Thank you so much for the presentation. All, all of us have moved to a plant-based diet, and we are very happy. It's actually easy to make the meals." Yes, so, that is. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for that comment, and thank you all for listening. And yeah, thank you, um, Komalji, for uh, the insightful presentation, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us uh, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon and. Uh, please subscribe to the north south youtube channel and uh, you can watch the earlier presentations as well in the youtube channel thank you everyone